Hello everyone, this is Shannon from That So Poe, and today I'm doing week 37 of my 2022 reads. This week I read a couple of short SFF works and I listened to one really excellent nonfiction on audio. Timestamps and content warnings are in the description box below. First, I finished Faya Magazine, issue number 22, edited by Devon Saunders. So this is a, a black speculative fiction magazine, and this issue was really interesting because I don't think that it was a themed issue, but it kind of felt like it was a little bit of a horror theme. A lot of these stories kind of verged on the grotesque, which was a little bit much for me, although there were a couple of uh, poems as well as stories that I thought were really interesting. The first story, which was Needs, Wants, and Dead Things by Kirk A. Johnson, was one that I thought was really, really effective, despite the sort of horror themes, which were gross. but. I thought the storytelling was really, really good. So there were some gems in this issue, even though overall um, that kind of gross uh, horror type feel of most of the stories just wasn't for me. So overall I gave this three out of five stars. Next, I read Nebula Vibrations by Annie Carl. This is a very short novella, maybe even novelette, sci-fi story that I heard about from Kristen at Kristenel SF Rep Reader, as well as Cousin at Always Doing. I'll link both of them below. Um, and this is actually not out yet. This comes out in, I believe, late October. So I got this as an ARC, an advanced reader's copy from NetGalley. So thank you to NetGalley and the publisher for that. Um, and I actually, this is my first arc that I've ever gotten from NetGalley. I use NetGalley often to figure out what's coming up for release, but I don't like to request anything because I don't want any sort of obligation reading. But this one was available immediately to get a copy of. And so I was able to just get it and read it the same day. And it's so short, so I was able to get through it. Um, so this is something that is really interesting because of the perspective. It's written kind of um, from the perspective of an older disabled woman uh, who wakes up on a generation starship and um, basically the captain and the crew kind of want something from her. And so it's a little bit of that journey. Um, it's, it's a very short story, but I think that the way that the story unfolded, the scope of the story actually really worked for that short space of time. But the perspective is what's so fascinating about this. Uh, the author has a disability and the character has a disability. I believe it's something genetic, but it has to do with um, joints or pain, that sort of thing. The character uses a cane to walk and it's definitely affected a lot of her interactions and experiences with other people and so there's a lot in this about the way that you know she's seen or treated by other people and a lot of that disconnect so that I thought was super super cool um, but I think that this story didn't work quite as well for me as it did for especially Kristen because I found that there were a lot of aspects of the story that just kind of brought me out of the the storytelling experience things that just didn't make sense to me character interactions or pieces of the world building that just didn't quite have logic that i followed although when i talked to kristen about it it totally worked for her so i think that's kind of person dependent um but that really brought me out of the story quite a bit so uh even though i loved the disability rep and i think that the way that the story unfolded was was really cool that bringing me out of the story didn't work so well. So I gave it three out of five stars. And lastly, I read We Had a Little Real Estate Problem by Cliff Nesteroff. This is a really excellent nonfiction book that I read on audio, and I definitely recommend the audio book, um, that is kind of a micro history mixed with oral history and interview, um, looking at Native Americans in comedy. And so basically Nesteroff, who is not indigenous himself, um, but is a comedy historian. So he actually has a previous book that's all about the history of like comedy and stand up and things like that. He delves into the history of indigenous people in like North America in comedy and looks at um, mainly stand up, but kind of building up to that some of the other performances and things that different Native Americans were 
involved in. So like in the 1800s talking about things like the Wild West shows and then things like vaudeville and then things like the early movies um, in the early 1900s, that sort of stuff. He focuses especially on a couple of really influential native figures, people like Will Rogers or Charlie Hill, um, but also interviews so many different modern stand-up comics and groups and things like that, like the 1491s. So he talks about a lot of really influential people, but also people who maybe haven't made it yet, that sort of stuff. And he uh, kind of makes sure to provide a lot of context of what was going on for different people, for different communities as you go forward. So he gives a lot of history of what has been going on since the mid late 1800s for a lot of native uh, people. So talks about things like residential schools or termination or um, the doctrine of discovery, a lot of really important issues and a lot of the ways that uh, native communities were impacted and talks about like for especially modern comedians, uh, how difficult it is for anybody who lives on a reservation to be able to find enough stage time to really hone their craft and how there's a big divide between those who follow more of the stand up um, a comedian type of thing versus uh, work on the powwow circuit and go and perform at different powwows and talks about powwow MCs and all sorts of stuff. So this book was so, so cool. I loved the history. I loved all of the oral histories where he interviewed people and, and got kind of their memories of these famous comedians or their memories of um, times or big events or different things like that. A lot of interviews with people. It is just really, really good. I think he centers those voices over his own, which is super smart and just um, includes also a lot of different uh, quotes and clips from, not clips, but you know, him reading out out, uh, the pieces, the little bits of comedy, and some of them are so funny. So I just, I thought this was an excellent audiobook. Really recommend if you like history, if you like kind of like that biography, oral history interview style thing, uh, it's just fantastic. So I gave this five out of five stars. Okay, so that is everything that I finished this week. If you guys have read any of these, if you're interested in them, or if you want to tell me what you've been reading this week, I'd love to hear from you. Just leave me a comment down below.